Now is the time to get things going. All right, so you guys are sitting around the campfire with the dwarves. Um, you have just regaled your tale um, about Gaffer Ironbeard and Prince Scale Erickson, uh, which the dwarves listened to intently and were very excited to hear. Um, and now you guys are all kind of cozying yourselves down, ready to sleep away the night wrapped up in your warm furs and around your small but effective campfire right, you guys want to do anything before you bed down so so the dwarves they heard our story and they said thank you and then they went to sleep or are they staying up to watch or um they're kind of right now they're sitting with you but they're kind of getting comfy um, they will absolutely um, take turns at watching if that's what you want to do. They're not opposed to doing a watch at all. Oh, I, know. Okay. I wouldn't take, make them do that. Yeah, we'll take turns. I mean, I'll I'll stay. I'll take first watch and then kind of rotate it out. Yeah. yeah. Is okay. it still? Is it already way dark outside? Um, it's 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 beyond dusk. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, it's pretty dark, especially because you're in amongst trees. So, while the trees are not dense here, it still offers a little bit more kind of shadow and stuff than normal. So, okay. I'm going to ask Cal that once it's once um, the sun comes up, if he'll if he'll scout ahead if he sees anything like. You want uh, him to like do a perimeter check, sort of thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, to see if like if we can find. Like, I don't want to keep traveling with the dwarves and leaving them nowhere. Like, if he could see Brannock's skeins, like, shack, like, if he scouts ahead a little bit. I don't know. Well, yeah, because we, we stopped to set up this camp while we were traveling to the house, but we couldn't find it, and, like, an hour had gone by, right? Yeah, you, wanna... you guys had traveled, and it got dark before you'd found it. Yeah, we, didn't, we don't want to leave these guys too far off, because they were going to the west while we were going to Brannock's and then further east, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that's why I want. Hoping Cal will do it. <laughs> um, he will do a quick perimeter check. Absolutely. Oh, of course he will. He will protest endlessly if you expect him to stay out in the freezing cold for long. But he will at <laughs> least do. He will do what he is bid. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> hmm. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, you take it in turns to watch. Cal does an occasional perimeter out in the dark, quietly and stealthily. Um, with his camo abilities, I mean, he's virtually invisible at night, so... Um, you know, other than the fact that it is freezing cold and you have to kind of keep your face and your fingers covered and try to make sure that none of your flesh is exposed, um, you wake up early the following morning fairly well rested. Um, as you kind of wake up, one of the dwarves, the one that took the last watch, is like poking the fire, trying to get a few of the embers going, just to kind of get a little bit of a little bit of early morning warmth for everybody. So I'm going to pray. Okay. And I am going. To get dressed, and then I'm going to say, before you leave, my friends, my newfound friends, perhaps I should impart with you a delicious feast and for breakfast that will embolden your hearts and give with you, leave with you a good impression. As okay. bumbling as my storytelling was, and the mistakes of our past encounter, our past fights. All right. Um, they all kind of look at each other and shrug and say, If you want to provide breakfast, that's more than fair to us. It's dangerous up here. We have encountered many things, so I want you to go without, you know, with, with bravery and without fear. And I'm actually going to cast a spell in an empty, in a freeish area. Okay, and what are you going to cast? Hero's Feast. Ooh, yummy, delicious. The, the the spell that scared poor Shira uh, because he thought I was like a witch. Because he thought god. you were some kind of god, right? 
All right, so yeah, you bring forth a magnificent feast, uh, which includes like tables and chairs and all the trimmings and stuff like that, um, of which the dwarves' eyes light up. One of them kind of walks over and pokes a chicken leg and says to you, Is the vast safe to eat? Uh, more so is by the graces of St. Cuthbert that we have this feast this morning that'll the food will sustain you for quite a long time and All right. you and you many wonderful benefits. Well, they look at each other and he says, Seems fair enough to me. He's like, aye. And they immediately start just grabbing and and start scuffing down the food. Um, so, yep, as they as they partake of your holy feast, um, they sort of start to glow because, of course, it's hot and it's warm and it's delicious. And it's exactly what they needed first thing bright and early in the morning. Quite a little I'm more. Gonna, Thank you for the follow. I'm going to partake as well and offer... All right, so you gain 12 temporary hit points as well as a plus one morale bonus on your attack and will save for the next 12 hours. Um, my, my new friends... Is there a is there something we could say if we were to run into more of your kin on the road or where you guys live? Because we are to be venturing around trying to settle any dispute or possible war that might be coming. I'm not saying there would be one, but is there anything we can say that'll get on the good graces of your your kin? Well, um, I mean, if you let them know that you are a friend to Gaffer Ironbeard. That'll definitely go a long way, like it did with us, our lads. Aye, yeah. Friend of Gaffer Ironbeard is a friend to all dwarves. Well, all of our kind of dwarves, anyway. Okay. Mm. Your kind? Well, yeah, we, you know, we dwell in the mountains to the south, and over the mountains to the north, there's those other kinds, the ones that kind of, uh, well, you know, they're a little different than us. The hill dwarves? Um, well, if you want to put a, want to put a label on it. The ones that mine, are you talking about? Well, we all mine, but... We're more interested in fine gems and jewels and wealth. What is they're more interested in? Ore and quality metal. But you guys are on good terms with each other, I would hope. Ah! Uh, I'd be lying if I was to say that there wasn't a grudge or two that runs between certain clans. Certain dwarven families are not always see eye to eye. That seems to be a common theme even among humans at this cold wasteland. Well, it's a hostile territory, isn't it? Tempers I, run thin from time to time. It just seems you guys would benefit more if you were on good terms with each other. And more well, for the most part, for the most part we are, but... Uh, you know, you, you can't always assume that one dwarf is friend of another. Hell, even inside their own clans, we squabble and argue amongst ourselves from time to time. Well, uh, no, I, of course, and the same is obviously true of humans. Well, yes, it's of course. Common in all races. It's just, it seems in a, in, a, in a land that is seemingly actively out to get you, such squabbles and grudges would be more, would be less, would be counter too, counterproductive. But know? this rough and rugged terrain and this dire temperature is why us dwarves are so hardy and, and tough. Well, that, is, that I do not dispute in, in the slightest. It's just... So, but to answer your question, is, just... <laughs> if you if you let them know that you're friends of Lord Gaffer Ironbeard or the Ironbeard family, most of them will probably welcome you with some kind of fair accord. That's good to know. 
Thank you. I wouldn't mention the fact, however, that you were, what was it you called it? Friendly fired. Um, ah. Any of the Fenbeard clan. That would probably not go down so well. That's not something I ever mention unless they already know. Well, um, we appreciate the breakfast that you provided. Well, it's it's the least I could do for... It was more uh, of a... With a friendly company. Absolutely. It was more of a meal than we expected bright and early. And definitely helped save on our provisions and rations. And this... This delicious ambrosia in these cups is, is fine. Fine liquor, too. Ah... Uh, just as a thought, if we was to take some of this with us, um, <laughs> would it would it maintain its shape, or is it likely to disappear at some point? I am pretty sure it's not to last. Although, to be perfectly honest, I've only done this spell a few times <laughs> in my life, and one was the night before war. So I didn't really pay attention because I was consumed with the fact that I was probably going to die the next day. So stuff your faces now, gentlemen. Well, it says it takes an hour to consume, and yeah. then that's when the effects take effect. Yeah, basically you all sit down and just, you know, the dwarves sit down, and as the conversation is flowing, they're guzzling and stuffing their faces. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Kia and Marlo, are you taking part in this feast, or are you refraining? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. All right, then, yeah, you add 12 temporary hit points for the next 12 hours and a plus one morale bonus, which applies to your attack rolls and your willpower saves. You're also immune to fear for the next 12 hours as well. Wow. And so, poison. Which Yay. is not a problem. Which is kind of... <laughs> well, actually, does it cancel it out? Is it like poison immunity and poison immunity kind of like cancels each other no <laughs> really inflicted by poison. If that's right. the case i may not <laughs> right no i'm sure it does not okay so an hour passes by the time everybody's finished the table just like celestially vanishes in a flash of light leaving no dishes to do which is always the bonus of hero's <laughs> feast i find um it's the best part don't have to do the freaking dishes right <laughs> <sighs> Okay, well, the dwarves look at you and say, well, they kind of grab hold of your forearm and shake it firmly. Fairly well. Maybe our paths are cross again soon one day. Uh, safe travels and... <laughs> do farewell. I mean, <laughs> I was going to say other things and I realized it probably would offend them, so I... Stop. Bye. <laughs> All right. And with that, the dwarves head back southwards to the main road and continue their journey east. Okay. Um, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> How's Cal doing? Um, he, I mean, he's done a couple of... You know, he did a couple of perimeters. Right now, he's warming himself um, in the bag. And he did not see anything? Nope. Damn. So Cal did, a, did some scouting, and he hasn't seen anything. Yeah, I mean, he didn't go far. Oh. I mean, he just kind of like did. did a perimeter around the camp. He didn't like okay, go. Okay, he did a five foot perimeter. And he, <laughs> he went once around Kia and said, nope, nothing here. <laughs> no, he probably went out a couple of, you know, probably went out at two or three hundred feet. Okay. To make sure nothing was loitering in the dark, but he didn't like Sorry. go and scout miles ahead for you, if that's what you're thinking in the middle of the night. No. <laughs> uh, so he sold, sold no enemies. That's good, right? I look a little bored. Need yep. to <laughs> travel longer north. Well, if it's if it's really cold, don't you know torture the poor thing by having him fly in this weather. Look, we were told to go north of the trail at the slates, and I imagine his his house is a little obscured from. You know, you don't want to make it <sighs> obvious that you're living here in places where dangerous things live. So I bet race I could find it easily. <laughs> Oh, quite probably. <laughs> well, we got to make do with with what we got, right? So I say we just keep on keeping on. Okay. All right. So you're going to continue heading up, following this kind of like little little path through the forest. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Beecham is following this, right? He partook in the meal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Beecham was not at all afraid to stuff his face with your magical delights. (laughs) (laughs) Why does he say that that way? Okay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, you travel about another hour to hour and a half. When up ahead, you can see what appears to be a clearing and a very obvious um, oh. log cabin. <laughs> um, and we are going to go ahead and kill that campfire because, you know, it's not burning anymore. Those trees are so creepy. Yeah, so, that's what I was thinking. Like skeleton trees. I'm just going to like look at Kia and Marlo and say, I'm secure my ass. I was totally off base with this. It's right out in the open. Right. What would Raisa do? Check for traps. Yes, check for traps. Okay. Do you really so, want to skulk around? So basically, or? just to kind of give you a better, because you're saying about the trees, um, they're kind of, because it's early in the morning as well, all these trees are pretty much, there's no leaf on them. They're all just like branches because they're deciduous trees and not pine trees. But they're all kind of frost laden and stuff like that. That's why they all look kind of like, you know, white. So I'm gonna eye the plants that I see, kind of apprehensively, just <laughs> watching them to make sure they don't vanish. <laughs> right. Yeah. Most of those are just small ferns, small woodland ferns that are like frosty and probably, quite possibly, dead <laughs> and brittle at this point. I'm just slowly. Where's the door? Is it? Where um, it would be to? here at the front. Yes. Is there windows that? Um, not that you can see. Just, we're trying to get on this guy's good side, so let's not, you know, skulk well, around. As you approach, you can see that there is a fire pit outside. Um, it's not covered in frost. It's kind of like um, freshly black. So odds are a fire was lit here last night because obviously it had enough warmth in that fire pit to stop the frost from forming on it. There is a kind of like a large metal basin, which has got a thick layer of ice over it probably obviously some kind of water and a huge pile of cut logs is up against the side of the log cabin is there a door right there or no? there is a door at the very front yep are you guys ready <laughs> just to, to say hello yes All right, you knock upon the door. Um, you hear no answer, no reply. Hmm. Do you think he's like out hunting or something? I'm gonna look at the fire pit more closely. Okay. Um, make a survival skill check for me, Mr. Okay. Rainier. Oh. As soon as he's looking at the fire pit. Yeah. Okay, um, it is a fire pit. <laughs> Good job. You, you don't really ascertain no, much more than guy. that, to be honest. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to go to the door again and knock louder. Like, okay. Really low. All right, um, nope, there is still no reply. Maybe there's like a back door or something. Uh, Marlo, so where you are, there is actually a makeshift window here. However, um, the wooden shutters on it are, like, open to the inside, and one of them is, like, hanging off, like it was forcibly opened from the outside, like somebody broke in. Um, guys, come here, please. I'm going to wander back there at her beck and call. This, All right. this looks this looks bad. Um, I don't think he's here. Damn and it. not because he left wanting to. Um, uh. And there appear to be ch- chuckabo footprints on the ground here. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see the, the little chicken feet or whatever it was on the ground? Oh, no. I was... I was oh. <laughs> right, but you kind of glancing inside, um, you can see... 
a fairly basic makeshift setup a rudimentary bed um, what appears to be a fur drying rack in the far corner a large grizzly bearskin rug um, a plain table with a large slab of meat on a board what appears to be um, blackened and singed meat on a spit over a cold fire um, and a small bench with a large woodsman's axe and a pair of boots sitting on it. So, uh, seeing this, I'm immediately going to run around and try to open the door. Okay. Um, yeah, the door opens easily. Oh, okay. Follow. I'm going in through the window because I'm <laughs> obviously uncouth and... <laughs> okay. What happened? It's like he was attacked. Look at the chair. Um, yep, uh, oh, one God, chair is chair. over, the other one is busted. <laughs> Poor chair, it never stood a chance. He also let his food burn. I mean, I don't know, some people like it like that. But uh, this obvious. is like charred nice. black, and it had a rotary spit. The top half is kind of like fairly pink still, but the bottom half has been singed. So, so yeah, it, it would lead you to believe that the fire was still lit and somebody stopped turning it for sure. Um, there's no blood. sign of blood anywhere, um, other than the blood red meat that is on the slab on the table, which looks like a rack of ribs from some kind of large um game animal. Um but if you would like to make a spot check, Kia, seeing as you are specifically looking for such things, I would be fine with that. Alrighty. While she does that, I'm going to look under the bed because I notice one of the pillows is starting to skew. Okay. <laughs> a skew. A skew. Not the pillow. First the chair, then this. Yeah, you know, oh, man. It's barbarians. <laughs> Alright. No, uh, other than the chairs being thrown aside, the pillow on the floor, um... You don't really notice anything. You can't see any tracks. There's no blood stains or anything to show that blood was drawn in a scuffle here. Okay. Underneath the bed, you find little to nothing. I'm going to head over to what looks like meat that was being eaten or prepared. Like, um, Is that a part of what was being cooked? Well, actually, it looks like what is over the fire looks like it was probably a pig. This doesn't look like it was pig. This looks like it was um, probably your Four. best guess would be deer. <laughs> and how cold is it? I imagine it's freezing with the window being open. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of actually sort of frost covered and frozen, really. And but it, it looks like it had been cooked. Right. No, it's raw. Oh, it's a raw thing? Hmm. Yeah. It has not been cooked. So, so... Hmm. He's here. He's cooking this pig. And something bursts through the window. It attacks him. Okay. But there's no blood. Maybe he got away. Or maybe it drug him away. Knocked him unconscious, drug him away. Yeah, but when they're so, uh, with that suggestion, I'm going to look at the floor between the window and the chairs, okay. and the door to see if there's any like claw marks or scratches that would denote someone being dragged. Uh, spot check. Right. Well, actually, no, be search. This would All be right. search because you're actually specifically looking for something. Hey. Um. There does appear to be scratches and indentations on the shutters of the window. From the inside or outside? Uh, outside, obviously, yeah. Um, yeah, so like, Leave if you was to close it, they would be on the outside. But they're kind of near the edge. Like near the, the if this is the shutters kind of out like that, they're kind of along the internal sides like this. Okay. Hmm. That's weird. Alright. And these shutters do open outwardly. Is that what you're saying? 
Uh, well, they open inwards. You, you'd open you them know. towards you, yeah. It looks like, as I said, one of them is barely hanging on. So it definitely looks like they were opened with severe force. So this is just like a pelt hanging over here or something? Yes, it's, it's a fairly fresh-looking um, pelt of what deer? looks like... Uh, well, it's probably a bit too big to be a deer, but quite possibly is of that. Might be an elk or something like that. Um, but it's still kind of fresh, so right, it's like I'm it's going dry. Back out through the window, and I'm looking around. I'm okay, leading away from the window. I right, uh, give me a spot check. Spot out, damn spot. Werewolf racer was here, right? <laughs> <laughs> there it is! Natural 20! <laughs> Why not? Wasn't even a combat roll and you still Wait, did you roll 20? 20? I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fucking man. Yeah, Wait, she sure please. did. Um, I just noticed that I've got that on repeat. Let me fix that. Because don't want that repeating every damn time. All right, yeah, so uh, Marlo already in with the first natural 20 of the night. Um, as I said, it wasn't even a combat roll, so that's kind of Congratulations. stealing your thunder. So if you are one of those that bet on spook, gold be yours. There you go. All right, okay, so yeah, the, the Chocobo tracks that you noticed earlier... Um, it would be quite a big two-legged chocobo by the looks of it, uh, with very large footprints. Um, you're not a skilled tracker by any means, but in this frosty outside, it's not hard to see these probably size 25 feet uh, footprints that are outside, kind of leading away and also to. So your best guess would be, unless the guy that lives here went out of his own window and has absolutely mahoosive feet something came in and left oh, um, something with bird feet came in and took this guy no. <laughs> right. uh, they, they wasn't bird feet it was more like huge big fork like more like human bare human feet huge oh <laughs> uh, what <laughs> okay yeah. um, what did you say bird feet uh, sorry, um, I was mistaken. I've been drinking. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, they're more like kind of a just large indentation of really just like really big, long, bare feet. Almost giant sized feet, ogre sized feet, something like that. Steph Curry or Yao Ming or. So I'm, I'm going to turn to Beecham. I don't want to say. It would seem that our way into the next settlements. We need to get this guy back. Perhaps we can save him and then he'll be indebted to us. It would go a lot farther than showing the, the dagger and saying we're friends it's of true. you know Alistar McCollum. Let's oh, try by to the way, when, uh, I know he wasn't part of your clan anymore, but we totally just like let a giant take your former <laughs> clansman and did nothing about it. So. so, seeing as we would be back if we we're successful, even if we we're unsuccessful, Beecham, do you think you could stay here and try to make this oh, place... Oh, um... I, 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 sup I suppose I could, yes. Well, it's shelter from the elements, and, I mean, there's food in there. We can build you a fire before we go, uh... Oh, I, I can, I can light a fire, and Don't with that he kind of goes me. over and pokes the meat and smells it. He says, mm, "This smells fresh enough. At least I have food." Anything um, with big feet. <laughs> uh, presumably, whatever it was that came here has done its business and left. Yes, and if anyone's going to find it, it'll be you. So, um, mm, yeah. yes, so I suppose I, I can I'm stay here. That sounds window. fair. Uh, that's not necessary, and I'm going to cast uh, Make Hole on the shutter to fix it. Okay, alright. I'm glad I went out through the window first. <laughs> <laughs> right, Van, now I have to use the door. 
just busted the window again. <laughs> I'm gonna... You can do that again, right? That'd be good. <laughs> I'm gonna open my little pack and say, Cal, can you help sniff and search around for this thing? Uh, he's like, for what thing? I'm gonna take him out and look at these footprints. They're huge. You're good at spotting and searching things. <laughs> um, sure, if I... S in true cow like fashion, sure, if I see a 20-foot man, I'll be sure to let you know. I'm going to drop him on the ground. Please. <laughs> okay, as soon as he hits the ground, he kind of, like, feels the cold underneath his feet and scurries back up your leg to your shoulder. Use your wings. <laughs> he, says, he says, in this wind, we've discussed this already. It's too open. Okay, well, just look around for us, please. We can't smell the way you can see the way you can. You like snags in her This is what you're for. <laughs> and and, and Beecham? Uh, yes. If at any time you see a creepy looking floating hand that seems to be gesturing and beckoning you, don't be afraid. It's me telling you to come to me. Um, and you're going to be where exactly? Well, that's the thing. If situation has changed or and we can't come back here, you're going to have to come to us. Um, or at least meet us halfway. We'll, we'll be on our way back and you will join us on the road. Or, but okay. the hand will guide you. I, I see. Uh, so as long as the hand leads me in the right direction, uh, that, that would be fine, yes. Yes, it'll always lead you in the right direction within the five-mile radius. But that's like if we're in a time-sensitive thing happens. I just don't want you to be freaked out that a ghostly hand appears and starts like pointing at you. And It's kind of creepy. Well, yes, I, uh, I, I, um, I greatly appreciate you pre-warning me because I probably wouldn't have taken it in a particularly friendly fashion, no. Yes, I, I seem to recall doing that to Kia and Risa before and they well, actually didn't come, I don't think. They didn't believe it. it me <laughs> trying to get them to... No, I did not. I was very confused. Why would I follow a creepy hand? <laughs> you must warn us of these things. Yeah. Well, so, perhaps Cal would have followed it. So I, I'm going to I'm going to give another nod to Beecham and I'm going to leave. All right. And say, we we won't be long. Savage. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> Beecham pretty much is like he picks up one of the chairs, puts it back, puts the pillows back on the bed and kind of straightens the place up to some degree. And then right. seems to be a little bit more comfortable at the fact that he's not going to have to traipse around through a freezing okay. cold wood. I was a giant bear clawed bird. We'll look at my little... <laughs> Where would I go? A bear clawed that bird. <laughs> Probably <laughs> to bird. some cave or something, right? I mean, cold. They have to be protected from the elements. That's so any true. like thick bushes or cow, yeah. cow, sure, yes, a layer or something. Mm. <laughs> cow, yes, please help. He says, well, I can... I'll jump down and have a scurry around. Uh, no, that's not necessary. Come it here, Cal. He can search Cal, much come better here. than we come can. Come here, Cal. What do you... Don't touch him, Radovan. He doesn't okay. like you. Cal, do you trust me that I would... I don't want you to get hurt, or Kia? Uh, I suppose. Does. So... I did heal you that one time long ago. I would do it again. Long ago. Okay. <laughs> so he kind of like wanders over towards you. Naren, thanks for the resub. Much love. Spam your hype and spam your pants off to show our love for a resub. Okay. Yeah, he, he kind of like cautiously comes over to you looking up at you squint-eyed, oh, so curious, like... <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna kneel, so I'm more on his level. Right. And is, is that him reaching up to me right now? No, I, I, I still, I still have my official cow right here. Oh, oh, look at all the cats! <laughs> I'm gonna put my pinky finger on him, like his forehead, awkwardly. Okay. And I'm gonna cast endure elements on no, him. No, I want his paw to reach up to your hand. And touch <laughs> no, we're not being that intimate or friendly. <laughs> okay, so you cast endure like elements on Cal, like a poke right, right. here. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, once once he has endure elements on him, um, he is far less, you know, picky about the fact that he's going to crawl around in the freezing frost. Um, you know, I mean, for you guys, you've got big furry boots on and stuff like that. Cal's walking through these undergrowth and stuff that's about this tall, so it's like he's got frost all the most all the way up to his chest. So for long periods of time, he's not happy with that shit. Um, I'd offer to carry you, Mr. Cal, but I think you can move faster than I could carry you. <laughs> right, yep. He's like, looks at Kia and then telepathically kind of just sends you a message. He says, he could do that all this time. <laughs> I know, he never <laughs> uses it for us. <laughs> uh, you see, he kind of glances back at um, Radovan, and then he scurries off forwards, gets about ten feet from you, stops, turns around, looks at you guys over his shoulder, and then scurries on a bit further, disappearing, like <laughs> bouncing between, you know, bet oh. between the brush and going behind the trees and stuff like that. Should we wait for him to come back, or? You can talk to him from a distance, right? Yeah, I mean, we should follow at least. Right. Yes, we'll be fine. Did you tell him to look for, like, a lair of some sort? Like, a place where... He knows what to do. <laughs> I don't know. The way he looks at, you know, us, is, he thinks we're all idiots. He can... doesn't think you're idiots. All right. He knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bundle myself up and follow generally where Cal ran to. Okay. All right. Before it lost sight of me. So you guys start wading through the woods and through the trees. Okay, um, well, um, let's see. We need to make a cow check. Um, and I need to check something here real quick. Cal check. A cow check. I got his character sheet open if you want me to. Yeah, um, something. the only thing is it's not a hundred, I know it's not up to date. Um, oh, but okay. I think that their, um, their spot is, like, is it plus nine? For I have plus 10 here. Okay, because it's probably gone up a bit because of your level. So, yeah, we'll go with the plus 10. Okay. Um, so, let me have a... So, 23, yeah. Okay, so Cal is following something. He doesn't know what he's following, but he his, he's following some large footprints, and he definitely says that they smell like wet dog, and he doesn't like it. Oh. I'm going to um, relay that message. It might be some kind of canine warning you. With human feet? It smells like a wet dog. That's what he said. So so it's an Anubis. I'm sorry. I had to. It's an Anubis. <laughs> I, I don't actually say that. <laughs> a calculation, perhaps, Gore? <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like a were dog? I... Like a werewolf? Mean. I don't know. Do werewolves have feet, or do they have like paws? I've never I seen know. one. Both. Uh, I I have seen one. It's it can be both. I mean, they are humans, and they turn in. I fought one when I was um well without my powers. A wee lad. <laughs> well, that being said, maybe he's one. Wait. Oh. You mean? You, you mean you mean Brannick? Brannick? Oh, I mean, maybe that would that's explain why, he... why there's not a struggle. And why he chose to willingly leave. I probably would also, I mean... I wouldn't think a werewolf would just knock him out, tick, pick him up, and take him somewhere, like... Mm. Think about the shutters, right? They were broken inward, but, I mean, if you're a beast, you just jump out, right? Unless Maybe that's was... why he chose to leave his clan. Thank you for more cheer, my friend, Mr. Jeep. Oh, shit. Well, Jeep. to isolate himself so he wouldn't Thank hurt anyone. That's true. Well, this is a whole other beast, this is then. A good theory. This is a good theory. Oh. Well, why wouldn't he be back? I mean, what? It's daylight, right? I mean, uh, it is now, yeah. And why would there be a struggle at the window? When he could just leave, unless he can't control it when he turns or something. Wait, um, can I do a... Would it be, like, a knowledge history or local? What, like, what time of month it was? What the moon would be? Like, the cycles and stuff? Uh, Geography? I mean... That would... Nature? Knowledge nature? Um, knowledge nature would cover it. 
Just take out your calendar. Um, honestly, it's been so overcast lately that you can't really remember. Okay. You don't really remember seeing the moon for several days, so you're really not sure. So I'm, I'm just going to express this down and say, I, I, I mean, if it was a full moon last night, that might be a clue. A clue. Hmm. Was it a full? I don't know. I mean, it's been gray. This whole world is white and gray. Huh. So if we find him and he is a werewolf, we should probably just leave him alone. I mean, he's out here not hurting anyone. He's conscientious enough to leave the clan and not hurt anyone. So we could still possibly ask for help. Although they did say he was an outsider. McCollum said he was an outsider in Duskane Village. Yes, he did. Yes. So probably That's they why I was if, wondering if, why he would really help very yeah, much. They, in fact, he was outsider. very specific in letting you know that he was not outcast by the village. He chose to leave on his he own chose reconnaissance. To leave. That's right. Yes. Well, I mean, we came all this way to find him. I mean, I guess we can still see if we can't find him and then... But begs the question: What if, what if he is a werewolf and he's not in his right frame of mind and he attacks us? Well, we just need to be on our guard. I mean, I don't want to kill the man. I don't either. <laughs> well, isn't there some way that we could stun him to get away? Possibly, just leave him. There's a way work. I can trap him until maybe he turns back. Well, that's oh. that's that then. If we run into him and he's a werewolf and he attacks us, we don't kill him unless we absolutely need to. <laughs> we'll contain okay. him, I guess. That's Just not a bad contain. idea. I could try to knock him out non-lethal, but... I'd rather try to contain him. Well, well you we'll can knock that. him out and then contain him. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty Just good Just don't idea. kill him, all right? <laughs> All righty. And I promise not to fireball. <laughs> okay, so um, commandments. Yeah, you're you continue on for several hours. Um, Cal continually <laughs> leading you through more and more of this kind of frostbitten, freezing cold woodland area, um, without any of the canopy. You know, if you can imagine these big deciduous trees when they're in the height of summer when they have all this big bushy greenery um, that's one thing but with all the greenery pretty much being gone and just sparse branches it seems to be that there's a lot more distance between the trees than you know normally you'd expect or that what you're used to um, which doesn't help because of course it allows that cold wind to blow through much more efficiently because you don't have all that yeah. thick over uh, kind of an like over cover that you normally have. Where are all the damn trees? Well, there's Maybe one. Someone burned them down. There's they're one. all here. It's just winter, and they have no and uh, They have no leaves, so they're all just. Can you stay close. This tree kind of freaks me out a little bit. I'm I know. Saying. I know. Uh, that one's actually that one you're looking at. That's actually like broken off. Ah. Uh -huh. I thought you were going to say, like, it, it, like it a... actually reaches out. Like, yeah. okay, rips your head know. off, rips your face <laughs> off, and wears it as a mask. Okay. <laughs> um, well, you carry on for, again, another good couple of hours. Um, finally, Cal kind of comes scurrying mm -hmm. back to you, and he says, I found something. I found something. I don't like what I found, it, but I found something. What is it? Well, we'll find out after the break, won't we? Damn it. Um, so we're going to take our first <laughs> short break. Myself and Jane are going to take a short break. So Cal, he's like, I found something. I don't like what I found, but I found something. What is it? Show me. Right, okay. So he leads you through the trees. Um, are you guys on this map? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And he kind of stops here. And he's kind of like staring at this kind of small rocky here? outcrop with a large kind of hole in the side of it and what appears to be bones littered and oh scattered God. out front oh, I'm gonna magic vestment myself okay <laughs> I see that now I gotta take well, away the <laughs> fucking spell resistance no uh, my bag for Cal to come back in alright he clambers back up in your bag quite happily 
<laughs> All right. Hmm. I'll cast um, Mage Armor on myself. All right. So, um, Rado Bear has plus four enhancement bonus to his AC for the next 14 hours, and you get four points of AC bonus. And Marlo, like you fucking need it. Uh, <laughs> so, Marlo's already a walking tank in her piece of cloth. Um, all right. I'm sorry, what happened? <laughs> oh, they're all buffing themselves to get a half decent AC, and I said, like oh, you they're need buffing it. Buffing themselves, yeah. okay. I was like, what happened to me? <laughs> Guys. Okay. Um, what do we do? Well, there are human bones, so if something's killing people. Yeah, you're about 50 it? foot away. Okay, we need a strategy. Just be quiet. Well, we could lure whatever it is out. <sighs> Or we can surprise it in there so as, unless there's an, uh, another way to get out. How big is that hole? Or... Um, it is about um, probably about 10 foot wide and about 12 foot tall. Okay. So it's pretty good. big. Um, we could yeah, probably smell us. We could, it's true. So do you think going, if we went invisible, do you think it would still be able to attack us? If it goes by smell and... I guess if it's dark in there. Like... Yeah, but how will we see if it's dark in there? <gasps> I don't know. That's why I would think we'd try to lure it out, because at least out here we can see, you know? But... What if mm. time is of the essence, and if we don't go, we wait. I have we'll dancing eat. lights. I take out the coin that Radovan enchanted. I still have this. Nice. I enchanted a coin? Mm -hmm. You don't remember yeah. that? You enchanted a coin so that I could <laughs> see? Oh, with continual flame. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was so long ago. Holy crap. That I was like the last it. campaign. Right? <laughs> hey, if you still <laughs> got it. remember nice. that. As soon as you put any lights in there, though, then they'll... Well, if, we're, if, we're in, if we're invisible, the light will still shine, right? I mean... Yes. I could also cast a light... <laughs> How can you glitter on this? <laughs> where it was at all times. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so basically it's like she's got a, a gold piece that when she holds it up, it has like a little candle flame that radiates off of it that doesn't doesn't you know doesn't issue any heat but it provides permanent magical light if i can cast a good glitter dust on it we'll be able to know where it's at well that's at least approach i'm scared just kidding i am a lady and have fought in many wars i'm not scared of a little I'm wet a dog. Lady. so i'm gonna i'm gonna move to this rock, I guess. Okay. okay. And I'm going to say, Kia, what are you doing? Gotta go a different sides. Yeah, Marlo should go over there. You will die in, like, a pinky flick. <laughs> <laughs> Marlo, go across. Marlo's the fighter. I'm the shield. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to figure what? out where this cat... Okay, here we go. We approach at the same time we peer in from both ends. Right, Marlo? Sounds good. Let's do this. Uh, so I'm going to slowly approach in tandem with Marlo, so we do it at the same time. Okay. To the edge of this hole. All right. Um, well, it kind of goes, you know, heads straight back into the side of the cliff face. And within next to no time, it is very, very dark in there. Damn, it's dark. How much we... can I see as an elf? Um, you can see okay right now because you uh, you have low light vision, which means yeah. you can see twice as far as a normal person in low light. Uh, but you that means you do have to have some light. Like if it's pitch black, you can't see either. I'm going to cast dancing lights. All righty. Ooh. Let me get you a light. 
and I'm gonna have to duration one minute. That's it. No, they don't. It doesn't last long. <laughs> nah, it's like not like the five E counterpart. I think lasts a little yeah. longer. Yeah, yeah. Five E counterpart like lasts for fucking ever. Um, <laughs> up to four lights. Okay. So I've got to do this. Um, what is, let's see, Dancing Light, the radius on that is it's 10 foot, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and give you that. And then, oh, I don't know why I'm doing it on this one. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> let's wait till you're actually in the cave first. <laughs> so one's going to enter. With All right. Marlo hopefully following with me. Yes. Because I feel much more confident when Marlo's next to me. I'm behind it's when you she guys. runs off to fight like 18 <laughs> things at once, I'm like, oh, Marlo. <laughs> 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 to be flanked over here. <laughs> All righty. Um, so, just for giggles and grins, chat, we are using dynamic lighting, which means our heroes do not see anywhere near what you do. Um, so, right now, that is what Marlo sees. Basically, she has some fl glowing balls in front of her illuminating the area, and that's about it. Super glowing balls, actually, I can't see anything. Um, Unless this, maybe the, the map is just super huge. Hold on. Oh, it is. You're all the way to the very bottom. Oh, I still can't see anything. <laughs> uh, should be able to, because when I choose your icon, I can. I just see me on black. Me too. Whoops. Really? And then I yeah. accidentally made myself move, so. Um, let me make sure I've got everything enabled the way I should have. Yep, that's all there. Um, well, seeing that's how dark it is, I am going to activate my shields. Okay. So I will have light like a regular torch as my shield. Let's see. So, so you guys can't see the glowing orbs? Um, I don't see. In front I don't of you? I see anything. That's really weird. I just weird. see our icons on black, like, like you said. Yeah, but something's not right then. Um, Maybe oh, huge I, no, I know what it is. Because guess what? What? Probably got... um. Yeah, it's it's got the whatchamacallit enabled. I hate that whatchamacallit. There yeah, we go. them technical terms. Yeah, the um so I'm just gonna have to Yeah, it, it's got the um fog of war still on the on the map, which I should have turned off, so I'm just uh fix that for you guys real quick. I can see the glowing balls and everything. Yeah, yeah me too. Okay, come awesome. on. For some reason, I'm right, reminded of that horror film with the, the flying balls that like. There we go. We got it. Okay. All right. Sorted. Yeah. So, um, and you're gonna illuminate your shield, Radovan. You said. Correct. Yes. All right. Um, what is the illumination on that shield? It's it's like a regular torch, I think. So right. twenty light, twenty feet yeah. dim. Right. Okay. Uh, yep. And all players see it, and it changes to 180. Ah! Okay, roll 20, stop lagging, because that's weird. Let's see how that looks. Ooh. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Whee. Okay. Hey. All right, so you ventured in. So your dancing lights, um, you can move them. Yes. Um, they can move up to 100 feet. Yes, move your balls. Okay. Um, but again, it only lasts yeah. for like one minute. All right. Am I in the way? Let me get off your balls. No, I'm just <laughs> okay. I can move you, though. <laughs> okay. So as soon as you come in, um, as I said, it's fairly tall. You notice that it's actually, lo it's actually kind of like opens up pretty large in here. It's about a 25-foot ceiling above you um, you can see off to the left it kind of goes up a slope and round onto like a ledge um, and I don't know if you can see yeah and what you can see kind of on the outs on the edge of your light 
<laughs> appears to be a massive pile of bones. Gosh. So I'm going to walk up to those and just try to get a sense of the animals that have been victim to whatever this thing is. I mean, I imagine... Um, I move up the lights further, but I can't move them myself. No. So. Um, you want to just kind of like move them up to here? Like, um... Because, I mean, you can kind of, like, layer them around yeah. to give you... Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, looking at the bones, um, some of them are human. Most of them are animal. There's humans among the victims. God. What, what if, what if he was actually taken by something to be eaten and is not the culprit himself. I am hoping we'll kill so. Whatever the culprit is. <laughs> and honestly, sometimes, I mean, even if it is him, gotta assume that sometimes a, a human would get in the way. How tall are the ceilings again? How tall About is the 25 ceiling? foot in this like open area here. Okay. I'm gonna look up into just to make sure there's nothing like on the walls or on the ceiling looking down at us. Um, the ceiling has a lot of like stalactites and stuff hanging down. Um, there's a few stalactites on the floor, but not that many. I look at you with your vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> My big words. I have words. I have all the best words. What's the uh, difference? <laughs> Guys, there's some, there's more up ahead. Okay. How long is it? Did, did they tell us how long he'd been out here? Um, these, I mean, these bones are, obviously, they're either meticulously picked clean or they've been here a while. And uh, th these are, the thing next to me, like, our little ledges that someone could... That is like a ledge, yes. That's to, oh, the, to well, the side Let's here. keep looking up at those, then. How, how tall right are the ledges? I mean, you said the ceiling is 25 foot, so... Um, the ledge is about ten foot up. Okay. Okay, stay close, I'm gonna guys. Move the lights up to where. Uh, they're gone. Sixty Radovan. sixty seconds. They're gone. Oh, it's already been a minute. Yeah, hell yeah! You guys have had a, almost right, a minute right. since you walked in here. Easy. <laughs> I forgot how time passes. <laughs> how does time work? Um, how about? I mean, you can, because Radovan, uh, actually, I need to, let me go ahead and, because Marlo has her coin, I need to give her her 10-foot radius light as well. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. It's creepy in here. Um, Weird noises. And that would be 360. No. There we go. All right, there you go. So, okay. So, how about Marlo? How about you climb on the ledge so you be above while we walk below? Okay. Greg Pokefane, thank you for the follow, mm -hmm. Greg. So Pokefane. I'm gonna climb up here, I guess. Score. Okay. You can um, handle giant falls. Yeah, I mean you're only ten foot off the ground, but I mean you're of course you're above them walking on the on the ledge. All right, more bones litter the ground to the right of Kia and Radovan. I obviously have my weapons and shield at the ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in crane mode because I don't know what the hell we're about to walk into. Right. So again, just for chat, that's what Radovan sees that's what Marlo sees because with dynamic lighting they can only see bits <laughs> of moving see. around like I can make the light <laughs> all right hold on let's stop where you are just one second okay what is that uh, right suddenly ah. Marlo Okay. Something out of the dark came flying from kind of the northeast, sort of from this direction here. 
Oh, the thing where I'm like, what is that? Okay. Um, and... <laughs> It felt like an incredibly sharp piece of rock. Oh, damn. I didn't um, even reflex save. Bastard. No, it, well, it's an attack. It's not a spell or anything like that. Um, <laughs> basically, something flew out of nowhere and sliced open a big gash in your thigh. You heard it smash against the wall beside you. Looking down, it looks like pretty much a broken stalactite or stalagmite got hurled. Or fell, but it, well, it couldn't have fell. It had to have been projectiled in your direction. Uh, did 15 points of damage. Oh. All right, guys. Oh I'm, I'm immediately going to run against this wall and like look at Marlo to see if she's okay. What was that? Yeah, she's okay. Oh. She's, she's bleeding. Something just threw what amounted to rock at me. It's up, up ahead to the right. Shit, I'm going invisible, guys. And I do that. If, if I can. <laughs> I'm going to okay, run gonna, up around here I'm to gonna see I'm going to peek around the, the corner. Oh, God, the shadows. <laughs> All right. Shit. Radavan yes. peeks around Daddy. the corner. I don't know. I can't see it. The lighting's being weird. Um, let's see. What do you see? So I see. Yeah, thing. that's because there's like a, a wally thing here. So you can't see past the corner of the wall. Oh. Make sure I've so got. Gonna, it. Yeah, I've got it. Over. I'm just. I'm taking off running around the side here. I okay, so you're gonna like run across this gap. Okay, somewhere in the distance you hear, <laughs> like somebody or something just snapped something. Think it's got more rocks. Fucking walls, man! I can't see shit. Oh, um. Spook, remember you have twelve extra hit points. Ten right. And also, so. guys, if you will oh, move, right. move, move turn by turn. Don't just move for me, because right. oh, okay. can we can we do initiatives? I don't when to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think you want initiatives? Fun. Are you fixing to fight something? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if you want a pre-roll initiatives, roll. by all means, go right ahead. I will. <laughs> so close. Marlo with a twenty-seven. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, I rolled a 19. Kia on an 8. Rado on a 6 is usually. Um, and these are. Okay. Alright. Okay. Um, so. Oh, this lighting. Alright, so you move up. Um, why is that not? There we are. Okay. Yep, there's like a... See, you're far enough away from Radovan that you're not getting... And his 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 shield is kind of behind the wall. So you've, yeah, only, got got your, you've only got your 10 foot of light. So you so can't see very far. So not being able to see, I'm going to see this little wall right here beside me. And I'm just going to get up as close as I can to it then. Okay. All right. Uh, give me a listen check, Marlo. Please. H I J K L. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just around the edge of the wall, you can hear this. <gasps> oh, awesome! Sounds like some kind of deep, heavy can breathing. Can Radman see me from here? Oh, I actually can, yes. I'm gonna... I mean, you're one of the few things I can see. Point around, like... <laughs> <laughs> Other side. So, the... She's still ten feet above me, right? Um, yes. She is ten foot above you. And in fact... Unless she comes to the edge of there, you probably can't see her. Because of the height right, difference, and she's all the way on the other side of the ledge. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, yeah, realistically, she probably can't. So she'd probably have to, like, move to the edge of the ledge and then, like, be pointing. So I'm actually going to... Stay frosty. <laughs> no. I'm actually going to... 
run since I'm below because you know it's way above me, ten feet. I'm only six feet, right? So yeah, if I run here, obviously I can't. He, whatever it is can't see me, right? Because yeah, because you I'm you below. would be up against the wall, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna run against this wall, right? Just be like, Keep. bearing in mind, of course, you couldn't see it either. Right. What? Well, I can hear it now, though, right? Um, <laughs> uh, can you uh, make a listen check? Oh, okay. Marlo can hear it because she's right up there, close to it, and it's, and she can hear the breathing. Let's see if you can hear it. Um, you can, yes. You can hear some heavy breathing somewhere up above you. Whatever it is, is up there. It's waiting. Oh, well, shit. I don't know if I want to be up here with it. <laughs> so, Kia, maybe. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Alright, suddenly, Marlo, you're aware of a huge, big, massive shadow blasts right across in front of you. It leaps down off of the balcony. You can still see its upper shoulders because this thing is like 15 feet tall. Um, it lands in the alcove, like right next to where Radovan is, um, and kind of like immediately like glances to the left and right. Um, so, Mr. Van... <laughs> I'm shining... I, I, it's a reaction. He lands... I'm shining my light right in his face. Just, okay. You know, because I'm looking at him. Yeah. Um, what you see is a wall of white fur as you start looking up to where you see these huge, big, glowing eyes, these massive horns, and in its right hand, it seems to be holding a ginormous stalactite like it's holding a dagger. <laughs> All right. Um, now, as I said, Marlo, you're up there. You're actually at its like shoulder level, because you can see you're you're kind of the, the ledge is level with its upper shoulders. This thing is pretty damn big, and very very funny. All right. Um, okay. So its action, it come blasting out. You're like, what the hell? It jumps down. Lands right there by Radovan. He spins around, sees this thing. Marlo, you get to act first. My reaction is to jump off on top of it. All because right. Because no Radovan. <laughs> okay, so you want to like jump on the thing? Yep. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> we know how this went last time, right? But I'm flying at it. We'll just. All right, okay, so you run over there, um, leap off and jump and try to grab up. Give me a jump check. Okay, we're going to fall on my ass. I'm just going to set it right there. What the okay. what? Master Shaker, thanks for hitting the reset Shit. button. Three months for you. Spam your pants off, people. Thank you. Oh, I thought that was going to be a two. I was about to lose my shit. All right. Um, I am going to just do this then. I'm going to change. I'm going to move him and re- and move Marlo to the front so she can be seen on him. Okay. Spider monkey battle strategy. So basically, you dive and land on this thing. It's got so much long, thick, shaggy fur, it's not hard for you to grip hold of it and, like, you know, hold on as you land. So you make your movement, jump, land, grab hold, and secure yourself so you're now, like, on this thing's shoulder and back. All right, Kia. You can hear all this going on, but of course you can't see it. Yeah. Okay. Because um, you are seeing that. I'll, I'll go ahead um, and cast uh, fly and then come over here so I can see what's going on. All right. Um, how high up are you going? About, you said it's about 25 feet. Um, the highest points in here are about 25 feet. These things okay. are about 15, 16 feet tall. The um, beast is? Yeah. Okay. His head I'll is. Up. He can reach the ceiling. Like, he can okay. just about touch the ceiling if he was to extend his I'll massive about arms. Up to 20 feet in the air. Just okay. to get a good view of everything. All right, Radovan. As you stand there in front of this massive white monstrosity. Um, so, with Marlo on top of it, not wanting to swing and accidentally hit her, because I know you said it's like over 10 feet tall. Yeah, it's huge. I can swing at its midsection or balls, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, 
I can hurt it with. Oh God! Can we see its balls? That's weird. Yeah, I mean, you you couldn't actually you couldn't reach as high up as Marlow is if you wanted to, unless you jumped. Well, I don't want to. I, so, I want to intentionally yeah. go like. So I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do a full attack on it. Okay. Um. No flank, no power attack. I have a plus one from. Uh, you guys do all still have the extra twelve hit points, and you do have the plus one morale bonus. Yes. From your delicious feast. Um, of course, that was not the full attack macro, but no, you hit the wrong one. <laughs> um, so the first one hits. <laughs> so we'll, we'll count the, the bottom two for. Oh, I did it again. Fuck. <laughs> And that one wouldn't actually be no. correct. Yes. Okay. We're going to do this right, and we're going to ignore the topmost. Right, so the do attack. the full attack macro, and whatever the top one is, we'll replace the, the, it with the 26. Yes. All right, so um, you hit it three times. Okay. So you go to work quickly and efficiently at this thing's legs. Smack, smack, smack. Belting away as hard as you can. So we're taking the top damage roll of 12... Plus seven the seven and, and the nine. So 28 points of damage. All right. Okay. As you slam into it, it feels like you're hitting tree trunks as the massive leg bones of this thing are so dense and so solid. Um, it is its turn. Okay. Um, well, Marlo is on its back and... Radovan is on the f is down below it. Um, well, you don't have to be a genius to figure out what this thing is going to do. It is going try to, to grab me. Absolutely, <laughs> nobody's going to voluntarily let something stay on top of it. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's a thirty-seven grapple. Holy shit! It's a fucking yeti. It's super strong. <laughs> um, you need a natural 20. <laughs> oh, I mean, you get those a lot, so there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, there's a chance, but holy shit. Oh, yeah, you, you don't have an... Yeah, yeah it has a... Grapple. These things have a plus 28 grapple. <laughs> Their natural state is to grab oh, shit to and out. crush it. <laughs> okay, um, so it succeeds in the grapple. However, when it grapples, it automatically applies damage. Um, because it like grabs you, pulls you around the front, and then like ugh, just puts you in like a power noogie, like it's rubbing your head. No, um, it just starts to crush you, like to try to crush you. It brings back these terrifying flashbacks of a giant I'm lobster claw. Shit right now. Remember the giant lobster claw? Yeah, yeah, right. I remember. Feel, feels kind of like that. <laughs> um. Alrighty, so that's. As it crushes down on you, you start to receive 15 points of damage. You are currently still grappled. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Marlo, it is your turn. You may attempt to break the grapple if you wish. <laughs> um, no, I'm just going to abundant step to um, behind it. Oh, that's something that you could have done last time, right? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, use your abundant step and appear on the ground behind it, right? Yeah. Okay, um, alright, so you're directly behind it. That counts as a full action, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, Kia! Yeah. Um. The thing is like... <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, there's... And that seemed to really piss it off. It. I'm like, it's like, well, chain lightning. Oh god, chain lightning. Okay. Right at it. All righty. What's the chaining to? Nothing. Just. It just takes the. It just. She, it's not chaining to anything. She just does the. Damage. It's just a fifty point of uh, electrical damage, um, and it makes chaining a to save. <laughs> reflex save. <laughs> not one of the cow limits <laughs> that doesn't mean it passes the reflex save so it yeah, takes 25 like points of damage so you've uh, done your your audio is not working for us as much 
Oh, don't know. Then I'll scream, if you guys back up, I can blind it. 53. Okay, there you go. Does it matter? It's really All righty. Well, I guess it's not with us standing around it. Oh, no, um, oh, Radavan. seem to see us. It's my turn again? It is your turn, yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to use my strength domain. That would be still there. Okay. To buff myself up, and I'm going to do a full attack on it. And I'm going to get the macro right this time, because, you know. Because, you know, Do I have macros. a claim, right? Uh, you do, because you have a Marlow behind it. Three hits for, what's that, 38, 43, 50 points of damage. Alrighty. Um, with the power of Cuthbert infused and empowering your arms, you smash into this thing, wading once again with your massive oh, mace wow. of doom. And um, it is severely injured. It's You can see the blood like ripping down from its legs. Um, one of the, you can see one of its kneecaps is exposed and it kind of drops down onto one knee because it can't support itself um, with its colossal weight on its injured legs. Um, it is its turn, however. Um, it is going to lash out at you with both its claws. Ugh. Okay. That's definitely a hit. And definitely a hit. Holy Alrighty. The huge, ginormous claws of this thing, which are pretty much the size of your chest, with razor-sharp talons that are about the size of long knives, slash across you, um, doing a total of... Combined damage of 29 points. All right, so... Ouch. Okay, huge <laughs> big tears are ripped into your studded leather as the claws dig deep into your flesh. Jeez. Marlo, your turn. Great. Uh, <laughs> dragon stall, baby. Um, get down here. Okay. Uh, plus two on all of those because of a flanking bonus courtesy of Radavan, plus one courtesy of the morale bonus. So in your bonus option box, put plus three. Just put three, not the plus. That'll fuck it up. DG Dell, thanks for the host. Thank you. Just so we don't have that. Yeah, well, it asked me if it was flanked, and I said yes. Oh, then, then you're good. So you just need to add plus one because it'll automatically add the plus two. Yeah, just add the one. Yeah. No power attack, one additional damage. Full attack, yes. Legendary Wassa! Um, four nice. hits. Okay. Um, so from behind it, you suddenly hear the motion and the yells and the whoops and the hollers and whatever she does. Um, oh shit, I probably should have asked you if you still wanted me to kill it. <laughs> um, well, you successfully did that in classic <laughs> style. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, you hear all the motion, you see the thing fall forward, and Marlo standing there with this oversized heart in her hand going, <laughs> like she ripped its heart out from the back. It is done. Oh. This thing is dead beyond dead. Whoops. Was I, that? I wasn't supposed to kill him, was I? No, that's... I don't, I don't think this was... No, I think, I think you're fine. <sighs> you but, really think this thing walked over to his cabin, was just like, hey, what's up, and then walked away? Like, maybe it was starving. <laughs> maybe uh, there hadn't been some, any humans I, passing through and it I'm, went I'm, searching. These well, things, I can't imagine them just uh, being a... I think there might be more in here. I mean, we oh gotta... shit! You think there's a family? <laughs> well, is this a gonna... male? Um, this yeah. is a male. Yes. Well, okay. you were talking about swinging at its balls earlier, so I kind of assumed. It's just guesstimating. 
too much fur. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, maybe maybe this thing did tramp out there and take Brannock for his family. Like, it's, it was hunting for the rest of whatever's in here. Um, I'm wait, gonna, what? I'm going to stoop down and examine the feet of this thing to see if it... <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to Marlo, come over here. Does this look like the footprints? Um... I'm gonna have Cal come out to see. Does does it have like a, a birdie quality? We did say it smelled no. like wet dog. The birdie claw thing was a complete myth. That was completely I'm um. How <laughs> said it smelled like wet dog? I would think this thing qualifies. Um, it, this thing Cal does out. smell like wet dog. Yes. I'm gonna ask Cal to go see if it's this has the same scent as what he was tracking. Uh, he says he doesn't need to go and see. He can smell it from here. <laughs> it absolutely does have the same scent. Oh. Do you think there's more, Cal? And you can tell by this thing's feet. This is... Um, this is probably what it was. Although... Go ahead and give me a... Um, let's see. A what the fuck check. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck check, right. Um, <laughs> give me a survival skill check. Um, all of you. Okay. Okay. What's the duration on your invis in, of your invisibility, Kia? Yeah. Oh, I think it's... <laughs> oh, let me look here. Ooh. <laughs> Mine's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> One round per level. Right, so and um, one round is six seconds, so oh God, so doesn't last so basically you can pretty much by the time you guys have investigated and looked at this thing, that's gonna be your time up. Unless you guys suddenly run and charge down through the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Um Norman says no. They're good for an encounter, <laughs> but that's about it. Okay. Um, so looking at it, Kia, one thing does strike you a bit funny. There is no freaking way this thing could have fit through that damn um, window. Couldn't have done. Oh, true. Okay. She needed survival check Unless to know just... that. Well, none of you figured it out. No one brought it up. <laughs> it didn't come to us. Yeah, exactly. As we're doing this. I know. I'm going to say that. <laughs> um, unless it could like shrink itself. Or unless its arms can stretch really far, and it can grab him. Uh, it's possible it could have reached in and grabbed him, for sure. Well, maybe okay. he left out Smashed. the window before he transformed all the way. Okay, so everyone... Yeah, Marlo is still firmly set on the idea that they just killed the guy they came to see. <laughs> um, I think we should press on, stay <laughs> on the same level, because Marlo, apparently, you're just being visible to them up there and here we have at least some cover we listen to see if we hear any more snarls or other sounds be ready to duck stalactites or stalagmites or whatever stalact thingies rocks <laughs> <laughs> All right. which one's that which one's okay so you got you kind of like just cautiously going along hugging the edge of the I'm cave wall right around, so there's that. They tried to crush okay, me. Yeah. Right and you're still like airborne. Thing. What's the duration yeah. of your flight? Marlo Kia. It's a long time, it's like hours. Yeah, um, so you you that's that's not a that's not an issue then. I'm yes. just I'm just I'm just gonna say this, Marlo. You did great versus that dragon. The stories are amazing. You fared less well against that rock lobster creature thing. There's this tactic thing that's going on. There's this reoccurring tactic that doesn't seem to you be do paying have off. have a tendency to jump on really strong things hoping to beat it down and then you get thrown down or crushed. Well, I mean, I could have just stayed up there and watched it pummel you to death, but I saw it jump at you and I was afraid it was going to crush you. Was there any way you could have punched it and kicked it from above? Without I wasn't thinking on it. about that. I was <laughs> thinking about the fact that it jumped right in front Marlo of me. Marlo is trying to perfect a new move. Oh, She's think... calling it death from above. You, you were thinking you were thinking <laughs> of me, which I do appreciate, I'll be honest. Because I'm not going to lie, that thing scared me when it jumped down. I, I just saw white, it was like it was snowing or something. And all I'm saying is, just give me, just give me six seconds before you jump on something, and then maybe I can help a little bit more. 
I could have. I know, but I still feel You could have blinded it. That's not a bad tactic. Okay. I mean. Sand. All right, let's press on. Out the walls, guys. Okay, you continue to sneak through the caravan, uh, through the canyons. Okay, um, so the walls now, as you start getting deeper in, it is getting lower. It's only about 15 feet tall here. So these things would be almost, like that last creature you just fought, it would have been almost touching the ceiling in here. It probably would have, for comfort, would have probably had to stoop down just a fraction. All right. Okay. As you proceed into the next kind of opening, the ceiling gets a little wider to being about um, not wider but higher to being about 20 feet but once again looking around you is an absolute scatteration of bones everywhere either this thing or uh, if you're I see a yeti <laughs> um, you probably can see one <laughs> Shit. Um, because you actually have um, okay, the okay, ability okay. to Guys. see that far um, let me see Guys, I, there's another one. Yeah, you can see 60 feet with, with some light. Okay. So. Uh, just let me, let me cast so, Lily Dust. So I'm immediately going to run to this side. Okay. Well, so. upon you saying that, um, and kind of whatever, because these things can obviously see in the dark, otherwise they wouldn't live in such filthy black... Um, Close them out of this wall. Whatever. Right against it. Okay. Um, so as soon as you start to react... It kind of leaps round the corner beyond visibility. Okay. Shit. Okay. Um, okay, it disappeared again. Just... If I can cast on it, then we'll... It can't hide from us. Okay? Uh, you, oh, I see it again. <laughs> okay, so you hear this from behind the wall. Followed by this. whole fucking thing. from somewhere way way further down inside like this one oh is like God. hollering and communicating <laughs> there are more okay apparently many more well, we can't just leave them out here they're killing people all right kia as you can you can see it it can see you you are also aware at the last moment as a massive spike of stone smashes into your chest Remember you have fifteen attempt health points. Huh? Yeah, take you you've got twelve hit twelve hit points 12. that are gonna be oh, taken off before you take ah, actual damage, yes. right? Thank you. Thank you. Please don't kill me. So, um oh it won't kill you. It can't kill you. Not with one of these anyway. Um oh, But God there gosh. went the twelve hit points plus three more, so you take okay, fifteen I points really of damage. So bad. <laughs> as this thing hurled a stalactite <laughs> at you. Okay. Fine. Now you're starting to okay. realize why there were so many stalactites and hardly any stalactmites. Because they're <laughs> busting the damn things off and using them as weapons. Get, get, get over here. Mm. No, I'm going to go invisible and say, let me go take a look. <laughs> you gotta cast a spell and... Shit. Okay, so are you casting invisibility? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Level four, okay. Is it still my turn? Because I would go as high as I can to like it where I'm touching the ceiling and then... All right, so you kind of go all, all the way up to I like the 20 to, foot yeah, point. Yeah, I try to stealth So I mean, you're, 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 how tall are you, like five foot 10? Five five or something. Five five. Okay, so oh. your 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 feet are about fifteen feet off the ground. Then can I like scrunch up into a ball? <laughs> oh, you can tuck your legs up. Yeah. I'm gonna tuck my leg. I'm gonna do a little tuck. Um, but considering these yeah. things are as big as they are, you know that they can reach you from here. And I'm gonna like scoop my way over us. I'd like to do it stealthily, so if I could attempt Why that. Why is this not working? It'd be great. <laughs> Hold on. For some reason, part of this roll 20 thing is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. One of the things isn't working. 
move silently. That's oh, there we go. Okay. okay. Well, you don't need to move silently in the air. Oh. You can't. You're, you're not. It's not anything. like you're making any noise up there. <laughs> can't hear your noise? feet dragging through the airwaves. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, right. Well, you can see this thing is tucked round behind the wall. Let me go around here. Oh wow. Okay. Um, and also, where you are, you can see that there is like a ledge once again. Um, the one that you're seeing is, is like on the ground floor with you guys, but there is a ledge that kind of runs up around the outskirts and the edge of it. Oh, I didn't hear any of that, but I think I understood what you were saying. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, there's like a ledge that runs up and around the sides. Yeah, of course, sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe reinitialize, or I don't know. It's, it's obviously just on there Skype. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Do we all roll initiatives? Um, if yeah. you wish, yes. Go right ahead. Because I would love to cast. Good luck, guys. Yay. <laughs> all right, Marlo on a 20. But Radovan is on a 5. Did Kia roll? Oh, I haven't rolled yet. Okay, new initiative. <laughs> you were the one eager to roll it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Damn it. That's all right. You're going at the same time as Rado. That's nice. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, well, so Marlo, I don't even see where Marlo is. Cody Hoyt, what's up, buddy? Appreciate the follow. Um, I don't even see where Marlo is. Oh, she's down down the corridor here, tucked yeah, behind the wall. Yeah, as much as I want to kill these things, I'm still thinking about how it started to try to crush me. And I can't abundance step again, so... Alrighty, so you're just gonna hold- you're just gonna stay put and hold your action? I'm gonna use some of the... Wow, I can't think. Wholeness of body? Is that okay, what it is? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, how many points of your wholeness of body do you wish to... Uh, oh god, I can't math. Hold on. Uh, uh, you have, what, 26 points? No. Oh, to, to be able to heal myself? Yeah. No, you have, a, you have a pool of 26. Okay, so I'll just use them all. Alright, okay. Uh, and you did remember to take those 12 points, the 12 point buffer off first, right? Okay. Alright, All right. so you use your wholeness of body to heal yourself this turn. Alright, it's its turn. Being confused and unable to see anything anymore, it is going to come out to play. 15, and then from there... So that is... 35, okay, so it's within 40 feet. Okay. So the thing comes charging round the corner, obviously unaware that Kia is there, but it sees Radovan's glowing shield and is going to charge straight down at him. Stop. Okay. Um, somewhere in the distance, Radovan, you hear something like, like something heavy just landed on the ground. He's going to stay right there for this turn. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, alrighty. So, Radovan, claw time. Um, as this thing, as it charges towards you with its hands outstretched and begins to try to rip you to pieces with its massive, talonish claws. Um, mm -hmm. Remembering the pain and the anguish that you felt from the last one, it's not a good prospect of realizing just how much this thing's massive claws can hurt. And it will most likely hit me because it's super strong. And yeah. it's, they're super talented at what they do too. They're All right, mm -hmm. so it's two hits. Um All righty. Um that didn't even type. That was interesting. There we go. Okay. 
uh, 22 points of damage um, as the massive talons tear at you. Wow. Um, okay, it is your turn at the same time as Kia's turn. Um, uh, Radovan go first and Kia then you go but technically what you do you, what you, your actions happen at exactly the same time so declare what you're both going to do and then we'll resolve what you both do I took 32 points of, uh, 22 points so uh -huh. I have to roll a 32 on my concentration correct? yes sir ouch if you wish to cast you will need 32 Yeah, I'm just going to attack. Shit. Okay. Full attack. Uh, look at all them dice going everywhere. I know. <laughs> um, you hit it all three times for a total of six, 22 points of damage with your mace. <laughs> okay. We're dealing the exact same amount of damage to each other. I know, right? It's a tit for tat type thing. Um, okay, um, as Radovan wax on that one, what do you want to do, Kia? Um, Jeep, thanks pass. for the additional cheer, my friend. Glitter Much dust pleasure. around here, so it doesn't hit Radovan. You do what? Glitter dust? Yes. Okay. Um, so, creatures and objects within 10 feet radius. Um, it can make a willpower save to negate that. Yes. Um, and it's Please. will save <laughs> is plus mm. nine. And I also yell, there's another one! Uh, oh, 29 willpower save. It totally negated that. So that did absolutely f all. No! Are you yes! kidding me right now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it super tough, apparently it's got a very strong willpower, this one. Um, the force is strong with this one. Um, okay. What the fuck again? All right, so Radovan hits it. You glitter dust. Um, Don't step on the keyboard. Marlo, your turn. As you okay. hide in the corner. Reluctantly, I'm going to make a mad dash up to it. Okay. I wanted to go around it, but I think it'll be able to hit me if I do that. Um... Would it get an attack of opportunity if I run by it? No, nope. uh, only only if you run by it within within its reach range. So if you kind of like go round it, take a wide berth, then no. Uh, what is your actual movement rate? I want to say it's forty. Hold on. So I mean, you yeah, could go 40. twenty here, um, twelve there. You could uh, you could you could kind yeah you could probably pull it off. You couldn't attack. But you could get okay, behind that's okay. it. Okay, I didn't expect to be able to attack with. Yeah, you can get behind it by running around. Yep. All right, it is their turn. Um, this one is still concentrating on Radovan. This one is going to do the same move action, come charging around, and oh, surprise and shock! There's somebody else here to attack. Oh, God. Um, so, um, <sighs> it's going to attack. The one at the back is going to attack Marlo. It doesn't get a flanking bonus because the one that it's across the plane from is not also attacking Marlo. So it doesn't get the flanking bonus. just gets to basically attack Marlo. Um, so yeah, you see the you see like uh, you hear one of them come charging out from behind you. Oh gosh, damn it! Uh. <laughs> Thank you for that. Natural 20! Uh, we have to confirm the crits here, so um, that's not good though, because these things hit like a... <laughs> come on, um, oh yeah, that's a crit. Um, so you're taking two hits, one of which is a crit, so that's this much damage. Don't do it. <laughs> um, with the crit included, 28 Jeez. damage. So suddenly you like hear this thing come out of nowhere. You spin around just as this thing like tears into your back and shoulders, and the pain is excruciating as these massive razor-like talons rip into you. Uh, Radovan, yo, um, you can have some of the same if you'd like. 
Ugh, it's a hit. Yep. You have to really roll low to miss with those guys. Oh, they, they, these things are beast. They're, they're, they're nasty. 23. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, Radovan and Kia both at the same time. So, Radovan, declare your action. That was 23. Let's roll a concentration. 33. And if I miss this, I die. I can go down. Alright, so you're going to try to... Try to... Try to cast a whole cast monster. Through, cast through the pain? Okay. Oh my god. So yeah, you need a 33 concentration skill to succeed. Please. Will the dice be with you today? No, it's not. It's not likely. Actually, I have to roll really high. Shit. Well, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Knowing my luck. Ah. Uh. Um. Thirty-one. Not quite enough, is it? Unfortunately. All right, nope. So you are unable to get your spell off. Kia, what are you doing? I am... Okay. <clears throat> Flying over to Radovan. So that's my move action. Okay. Um, all right, so you're flying over there and then coming down. And so then that's... Um, what is your what is your move action? What's the, what's how much can you move? Uh, 40, 30? I was kind of like being down, so hopefully. Because that's I like reach him. forty feet, but then you've also got movement to go from the top down, so that would be like. Oh God. Okay. Fifty feet of of actual, and in theory you could go down at an angle, but if you do that. You're gonna be bumping can into I Yetis. Can reach him at all? Even with like my staff, can that touch? What are you else? trying to do? Huh? What are you trying to do? Explain what you're trying I'm to trying do. I'm trying to touch him somewhere and cast a spell on him. Um, a touch effect spell that requires you to touch him. You or yeah. Um, let me see. Because you'd have to <laughs> stay. You'd have to stay up there not to hit the Yetis, and that's like forty. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't think I can. Um, <sighs> it's touch and go, so I'm gonna err on the side of you guys, cause um, so I'm gonna say yes, <laughs> barely, really? barely, but yes. And you're like you're right there. It's like <laughs> you know. I'm gonna reach out with with my with my quarter staff and touch the top of Radovan's head. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to cast Greater Invisibility on him. I don't know why it rolled other. Oh, there it is. Okay. It does it because it's got that save. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, I, you bump <laughs> Radovan on the head. for a second, Marlo. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... I don't know. Okay. One second. Um, all right. Okay. So you cast that. Um, mm -hmm. It is Marlo's turn. So Marlo, you've got one directly in front of you and one kind of behind you. Oh, I'm muted. Um, just knowing, like in the second that Radovan was in front, getting beaten by the thing, I'm not concerned with the one behind me. So I'm gonna unload on the one in front of me. Okay. All right. How many points do you have left, Marlo? I'm scared for you. Uh, 39. Yeah. 
she's okay. she's probably got another round. Okay. She can probably take another another round of pounding from this thing. <laughs> and uh, because it doesn't really fucking matter, it's gonna hit me regardless of my AC at this point. Um, if they I'm down two hit, points or not. Yeah, they hit well. Um, I'm going to fall into snake style. Okay. No, the mosquito bit me. Um, these things. I mean, just just bearing in mind, you guys are not having any trouble hitting these things at all. Their AC clearly is not that high. I mean, they're mm-hmm. huge, big, furry carpets to punch. Additional attack bonus one. Power attack no. Additional damage actually at negative one for damage. Full attack yes. No. Oh, hey, and 20. that is that is actually natural twenty. It's just one twenty. The second one was a nineteen. <laughs> that would be so yeah, it's only one twenty, but it it is a confirmed crit, so it does count as a crit. So what that's a shit damage though. That's another <laughs> crit, uh, another twenty for Spook. Alrighty. That's forty six damage. That's not bad. Yeah, that's total. All of them hit. Which, yeah, they all easily hit. Alright, so 46 damage, and it already taken 20... No, that was from the other ones. Okay, it's 46 damage plus the 22 that it took from Rado. Okay. Here, have a have a, a colored icon thingy. Oh, for fuck's sake! So... <laughs> just um, orange! Yeah, just orange! It's fucking huge! <laughs> um, it is the Yeti's turn. Okay, um, the Yeti in front, Rado, as you're expecting to be torn a piece t- to pieces, limb from limb, any moment, seems to be somewhat confused and bewildered, as it's like, <clears throat> and starts looking around. I mean, you're standing right there in front of it, but it, for some reason, it doesn't seem to know you're there. So instead, um, it is going to use its move. Um... Me. To run over here and just kind of swing like and start sweeping around like it can oh, sense good. something's close. <laughs> oh, they're not smart. Um, they're not overly into. I mean, they're not dumb by any means. Um, yeah, but that the, still leaves this one of them. Literally just vanished. So of course it would just be like. Well, well obviously it doesn't think you're in front of it because it doesn't understand that you're invisible. Uh, any more than you understand that you're invisible. You might well, now. You can probably catch on, yeah. Yeah, now you might, like, figure it out. But um, prior to that, of course, you wouldn't have known. Um, but, um, but yeah, so logically, it's like, well, whatever it was isn't here. So it's just, like, <clears throat> swatting around in the dark to see if it can find you. Uh, Marlo, you have a friend to play with. Yeah, of um, course I do. And uh, real quick, Master Shake Snake Style basically increases my critical chance, but decreases Ninja. Thanks my for cheer, bud. Thank you, Ninja. Ninja. Yay. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, all right. So the first claw attack. Second claw Ooh. attack. Ouch. Oh. Are you kidding me? No, do do you understand the significance of this though? Like, Twenty-four just, points of matter. damage. I can subtract tw- uh, two to AC because it won't be able to hit me anyway. Oh, that's right. It'll still hit me anyway. Except this would have actually meant it didn't have. It wouldn't have done if she had have done that. Yeah, if I put crane style instead and tried you, to add two C instead of subtracting two AC. Yep. Gosh, damn it! <laughs> I, I didn't roll. I mean, well, I, I'm lying. I did roll, but I mean, you know, <laughs> well, it was deliberate. It was deliberate. Okay. Um, right. That's the Yeti's attacks. Um, Radavan, Mister Invisible. What do you want to do? You didn't get hit this turn. So, seeing that I didn't get hit, I'm going to immediately cast full strength um, uh, spe- uh, heal spell. Okay. And what I'm, I'm what cast heal spell? Cure moderate wounds mass, so it's going to affect everybody that I choose. Okay. Invisible. So basically, Kia, Marlo, and yourself. Um, would you like to include the Yeti? 
Yes, yes I would include Excellent. Yes, I'm a smart person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so... That's my last six-level spell slot. By the doing. power of St. Cuthbert, um, 26 points of health healed to everybody. And I'm going to back into the corner, and I'm going to say, kill them. I will keep healing you. <laughs> All right. Um, Kia, it is your turn. I'm going to say, I got a better idea. <laughs> say, sorry, Marlo, and I'm going to turn it... Go to her and make her invisible too. So now we're all invisible. <laughs> okay. Um, you all have greater invisibility. Have so fun. the joy of greater invisibility, of course, is it doesn't end when you hit something. Ooh. So. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> all right. um, could I heal Marlo if I don't see her? Probably not, right? No, but... Uh, well, you don't know where she is, so it's kind of hard to heal what you can't touch. Yeah, I mean... It's the mask works, like because mask you don't have to. Spells. It's who I choose, but I can't see them, right? So... Right. Um, but prior... Actually, that's that's the thing, isn't it? Um, you could see Marlo, so you could heal her, and you know where you are. It's Kia you couldn't have healed last turn. Okay. Okay, I'll just take away the... Yeah, you spell. couldn't have gotten healed, because he couldn't have chosen you, because he didn't know where you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. It was three points. But now that I can't see Marlo, I can't heal her either, so... Um, no, you'd have to know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> now we can kill him. Um, let's see. Yep. Alrighty. Um, so what do you want to do, Kia? Oh, you, you cast you cast invisibility on Marlo. Okay. Yeah. Alright, Marlo, you are invisible. Okay, well in taking my cue from Radavan, I'm gonna He said kill him, so I'm gonna fucking kill him, even though I don't realize he can't heal me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well I did say I have a better idea. Yep. Well, basically, once you engage them in combat, you count as invisible, so they automatically get, like, minus four to hit you. So that kind of adds four yeah, to your AC. <laughs> minus four, that's it? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, it's kind of like when you're punching something, they kind of know you're right there. You know? It's like they feel all the pain in the chest, and there's something like, there's something right in front of me hitting me. Let me just rip out of that thing. So I have a question. <laughs> uh -huh. If I do a full flurry of blows, am I still able to take a five... Five step. A five foot step. Yes. All right. I mean. Okay, that's that's pretty nice. Fumble, motherfucker. Wow. Um, uh, wow. you hit it twice. <laughs> We're laughing. Thanks for following. <laughs> All right. So you, the top two hit. So you did eighteen points of damage. This one hadn't been hit yet. Ichabod Schwartz. You're just a and Schwartz. With that, I'm gonna take. Thanks for the party, buddy. Well, let me measure that out before I try to just yeah. start moving. Right. Mechanically, it <laughs> doesn't of... matter because these things have a 15-foot reach, so... <laughs> yeah, but I want it to... I mean, it knows I'm punching it from that one area, so... Yep. I mean, it can probably still just swing, but... It's still going to get... Either way, it still gets a minus probably. four. If you so, again, you, if you step back, you can, but it's its range is fifteen feet. Yeah. So. Isn't there like a wall right there though? They couldn't. Uh, there's a wall like right there, like literally oh, my right shit there. Froze. Hold on. Uh oh. <laughs> oh God! Why are you so slow, roll twenty? What's behind me here? Uh, behind you is bones I'm take and step, five step, five foot step, five right. foot. Yeah, that. Okay. I don't know if that was five feet, but eh. it was like right here. So yeah, that's eight feet. As long as it's still within range, it still basically gets the same thing minus four to hit. Eh. Um. Yeah. Bitch. Ah, but it Wait, missed with the second way. one. It only hit you once. Ooh. For thirteen. All right, this one is still clueless as to where anybody is. 
Um, it's going to hear this one yelp, so it's going to run over here next to this one and kind of swing around. But, again, it doesn't actually know where you were at all, so it's going to be outside of the 15 feet. Um, so it won't get to hit you. Radavan. I am casting Divine Power on myself. Divine in Power! In preparation for the following turn. Okay. Gives you a plus six enhancements bonus to your strength. And you gain a 14 hit point buffer. Which I desperately need. <laughs> Alright. Um, Kia, what do you want to do? I'm going to cast Chain Lightning on the one that's hurt and then have that chain over to the other one. Okay. Cast Ray Spell. Ooh, that's a bit wimpy. <laughs> that is super wimpy. What is that? That is the wimpiest <laughs> fucking lightning I've ever seen. Wow. It's Wimp Lightning. <laughs> Alrighty, so... Um, <laughs> wimpy Lightning. Force isn't strong with you today. Right? <laughs> okay, so you're Chain Lightning to this one, and then that ricochets to that one. That's okay. Um, so 34, it gets to say It's going to try to save for half, yeah. by default. Uh, 1d20 plus willpower save no it's a reflex save which is only 8 and it ah! saves by the skin no, of its it. measly teeth so it only takes 17 okay. Fine. I'm going to re release a compilation album of just my sound effects <laughs> of just you cringing <laughs> <laughs> alright and then the other one basically takes half of that, right? Um, so it takes, what do we say, 17. All right. Arbitrary Games, thanks for the follow, buddy. Okay, um, and he is it's just about a third. Okay. All right, Marlo. What to do because I can run up and attack this guy with one punch, but he's probably gonna kill me on the next round. Damn it, she's turning invisible. This is layer um. four. <laughs> 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 <That's> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Alright, so. The dog agrees. <laughs> right, yeah, the dog's like dumbass. Let me check my styles <laughs> real quick. Check your styles. All right, um, flamenco crane style, I guess. I'm yeah. going to flamenco style. Be good one right now. Run up, straight up in this one's face, and just punch it as oh. hard as I can. Incidentally, um, what I should have actually done is put that up on. There you go. That's what they're fighting, guys. So if you want a better look, okay. Style. Could you create Gundam style? Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Die. Just plain attack. Alright. No flanking bonus. Um, hold on. You were, you're here. Hang on. From where you were. Stop it, stupid thing. There we go. Um. Oh, yeah, okay. No, you're right. Well, I wasn't... That wasn't where I was, but... <laughs> no, I was trying to see if you were if you were physically within five feet of that one. Because if you were, you can five foot step and still make a full attack. Oh, okay. I that was what were, I was trying to see. I thought you were checking for charge. No, 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 no. Well, you have to have 20 feet of distance to be able to do a charge yeah. anyway. Um, thank you for the follow. Um, but unfortunately, no. You would have had to move a little bit further than that, so... You'd have to use a move action. Bonus. Actually, kill it dead. Damage. Please hit it as much as you can. Oof. Um, that's a hit for 14 wow. points of damage. That's Please. 85, 95. Right, he is down on one leg. Um, he's like crunched down, but it is still alive. Uh, it is not completely dead. 
It is hurt, but it is not dead. Um, I, it is going to lash out. It's kind of like supporting itself on one hand. So it just lashes out with the other claw, instinctively. And misses the mark. So it swipes at thin air. Um, this one doesn't actually know exactly where you are. Um, so it is going to just kind of run forward. And starts looking around. It's, you see it start to sniff. <laughs> Seems to have brain. stopped looking for you. And it's now starting to smell. And it's turned in your direction. Like It's like... <laughs> So it can smell, it smells you, it knows you, roughly where you guys are, but it doesn't actually know where you are specifically. And that's another round. Okay. Um, so, Rado. With my newfound everything, I'm going to do a full <laughs> attack again. Okay. I hope for a little bit better, um, you know. All right. No flank, no power attack, one. Fortunately, I don't have power attack. That's so good. Oh, might have been something. Oh, when, when they're easy really. things to hit, when they're things that are this easy to hit, absolutely. I have power attack, but I never use it. You at, Well, something that's this easy to hit, you totally should be power attacking, because you're changing out to hit that you don't need for shitloads of extra damage. Um, okay, that's three hits. That's 16. 10, 20... 35. Alright, this one is now on red. So this one, is, he's not as badly hurt as the other one, but he is hurt badly. Kia, your turn. Yep, I'm going to tr attempt to finish it off by my another... I love I loved chain lightning, I guess, um, okay, on that one. So you're going to chain lightning this one and then ricochet to the other one? Yeah. Alright. Now, I'm going to... Here's the thing, right? Yeah. <coughs> you okay, don't know where Marlo it. is. No. Do you okay, want so to ricochet there? it at the other one, not knowing... You know Marlo's fighting it, but you can't see her. You don't know where she is. So, do you want to chain lightning it over there, or no? So I know I know she's attacking that. You one. know she is in melee combat with that one, but for all you know, that's your chain lightning could slam her right in the back because you can't God, see. God no. And I wouldn't okay. be able to reflex save against that, huh? No, if that's okay. So there is there is pro when finish, you make her because she's I invisible, moment, you can't I see her, so you can't chain lightning the one. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cursing under my breath. Because the thing with chain lightning is, remember, it only goes in a straight line. It can't take curves or bends. So, all right, that will be 50. It doesn't matter. He is dead, even if he saves. All right, so that one is destroyed as your lightning bolt blasts into it. Um, why did I just move you? I didn't mean to do that. Um, okay, yeah, you blast into it with your beam of light, <laughs> striking it down. Leaving this one seriously wounded one, which apparently just shot lightning somehow. <laughs> um, all right, Marlo, it is your turn. Make it count. Damn it with the fumbles! Oh boy. <laughs> um, you still hit it enough. You still hit it three times, and that is enough to finish it off. Okay. So, yep, yeah, you butcher. You finally waylay and smash this one to oblivion, finally bringing the massive beast down to the ground. It is defeated. Alrighty. Uh, guys? Um. Can I like end the spell? So wait, no. Let me just go, ch guys. Let me just go check around the corner real quick. Just come with me. Follow my voice. <laughs> <laughs> come with me. 
And so you'll see. <laughs> I imagine Marlo and Radovan are going to bump into each other as we round this corner. <laughs> oh! So oh, after I bump in, into Radovan, I'm going to put a hand on his shoulder so that I don't do that again. Yeah. Find each other, heal each other. I'm sorry. I thought it would help, but I don't think it helped. All right, so Kia, you're floating up here on the ledge. I'm not. I'm not going to lie, Kia. You probably saved both of our lives. I don't know. Yeah, I... it did miss me a couple times because of that. So I'm gonna, and I, I, it got me to cast some spells. So I'm gonna cast Cure Critical on Marlo, since she's holding my back. <laughs> um, then you are healed 35 points, El Monko. <laughs> Guys, that's a ledge. You're gonna have to go around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we do. So you guys are going to walk all the way around the ledge? Okay. Um, by, the ti- by the time you have done that, and it's only <laughs> six more seconds. Um, so, yeah. Kia, you do not have invisibility at the moment. That's okay. for myself. because uh, Then you are healed 33. This place is so big. Um, by this time, I imagine my... Um, yeah, I mean, you guys can see Kiliana now, by the way. You can see her hovering in the uh, hovering in the air. Yeah, I, I only had a minute left on my own Divine's Power spell, so that goes away too. So, yeah. um, You two are both still... In, you and Marlo are still invisible at the moment. So I'm going to run f- forward with Marlo still holding my back, I hope. And we're going to try um, to get is she, Are you going to... you going to follow... you going to... Is Marlo going to follow Radovan, like, with one hand on his shoulder? Okay. Alright. I'm going to go until uh, he, I can... Oop. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I'll... I'll tell okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, and we have a kind donation from Lilithin. Hey! And we will read that here in just Thank a you. second, because we're coming to the coming close to the end here. All right, you have, you have, and a donation from Arbitrary Games as well. Thank you, ah, appreciate oh, that. Thank you. thank you. Very kind, guys, and we'll thank you also properly here in just a second. So I'm going to be calling back to Kia to, to the left, to the left, as I run this way. Everything in the box to the I on the left. In a box to the left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Redavan, you are now visible. Okay, so I'm immediately going to stop and like go into go into the side of the the wall. Okay. Just like gesture for people. Just like. <sighs> oh, this is a hellhole. All right. Well, uh, if we, uh, everybody, give me oh, everybody, yeah, give me a listen head, check, please. Way, guys, dead to your head. If we encounter anything, I can cast a spell, but I don't want to hit you guys with it as well. So what is it? I'll stay behind what, was, what was you saying, Kia, about a what? I said there's a dead, a dead deer. deer ahead. Okay. Ready. Okay, so yeah, you can see the what she's talking about is this deer corpse down here that she can see out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, everybody make a listen check for me. Well, actually, if you spoke and just said that, you don't need to make well, a listen check. Well, I was whispering. I mean, I was. No, I but was Kia, Kia was saying there's a deer down there, right? Oh. Um, yeah. So you hear what sounds like, yeah! and another yeti no. comes charging round the corner. No, this one's much smaller. This one could have fit through the art uh, through the um, window, but those other ones couldn't have done. Oh, a little oh baby! My God. <laughs> we just slaughtered a family. All right. Okay. Um, it comes charging round the corner with its hits. I mean, here's the thing, right? This thing is Radovan sized. It's little for a yeti, but it is yeah. still the size. It's still about six foot six, and more like a gorilla. So while you think this thing is cute, that's great. Um, Imagine. <laughs> A yeti um, the yeah, it was it was really cute, Radavan. It just um, how many? Um, Let's wait and see. Uh, one how did it get it? Why is that on the yeti? <laughs> just one hit, but yeah. 
<laughs> right, man, I can't punch that. It's just a baby. All right. Um, it clawed you for four <laughs> points of damage. Okay. Ah, oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's carrying its little stalagmite and everything. I can't. <laughs> like a mini stalagmite. Oh. Alright, um, you want initiatives? Yeah. Oh, there's a big one too. Well, oh shit, there's sense. another one. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, there, there's another one. <laughs> oh, thank god I rolled better this time. Jesus. Alright. So Radovan's initiative oh. Oops. is 18. Um, oh, I'm not clicked on me. Hold on. <laughs> Kia is 8. Marlo, 21. And let's roll their initiative. They are going to be... Ooh. Um... Okay. Alrighty. Um, so, th through your laughing and incessant whatever, as this poor little thing comes charging around, and yeah. um, all right. So it got the first attack anyway. Um, so Marlo, what do you want to do? You are still technically invisible right now. I'm holding my action because Radovan told me that <laughs> okay. we need to stay out of the way. So. All right. Um, then Radovan, you are up next. Okay, so I'm going to cast defensively, so I have to roll concentration twice. Uh huh. I'm casting a fifth level spell called Flame Strike. Okay. So it's I have to roll to concentrate to cast it first, so I don't get an attack of opportunity. Uh, which you do. And then I have to do it again because I took four points of damage, so I have to roll over. 14, uh, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Which no problem. I do. Mm -hmm. Great. So I only show four points, so it's fourteen. So you're flame striking, flame boy. I'm flame striking the big fucker. All right. But it has a ten foot radius, so it will hit. You know, it will hit the baby too. Oh, you're gonna kill its mini. <laughs> All right. So you drop a flame strike. <laughs> okay. Uh, for 41 points oh, of well. damage. All right. Um, okay. Half the damage is fire damage. So that's actually... You're going to actually do... Oh, it uh, probably has weakness. Okay. Um, you've, you've, you incinerate the small one. Baby goes oh. bye-bye. <laughs> Um, it is a, it, you that literally, so it lights sad. up as its fur just bursts in a column of holy fire as it screams, as it runs into this wall and runs into this wall and then collapses on the floor. Um, this oh. one lets out a loud, hollering scream as well. Um, Radovan, you monster. Yeah, Radovan, what an <laughs> asshole. What's gonna kill asshole, what an asshole, crazy. man. Um, <laughs> Kia Liana, what do you want to do? Whose turn is it? Sorry. Kia Liana. What does she want to oh, do? Oh, Kia. K Kami? Oh. Kami? Sorry. sorry. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> um, I'm going to cast... I'm just going to cast a magic missile on the one coming at us. Okay. So just get some damage in there. You can't miss it, so... Um, 17 points of magical missile damage. Nice. Alright. All right. Um, it's technically in red. Just got to red there. Alright, it's its turn. Alright, it is going to try to, in rage and anger, tear into Radovan. Well, we well you hit killed twice. its baby, so. You should just roll it, unless it fumbles. No, that's a hit. Yeah, but I want to roll, because I might crit you, you see. Uh. <laughs> yeah, share the love. Right. I can crit Marlo every few seconds. 
<laughs> for 26 points Ouch. of damage as Ow. it tears into you. Okay, Marlo, give me... Uh, and sorry, and Kia. In fact, all of you, give me a listen check. Oh, God, they're okay. coming from behind too, aren't they? Oh, no. Probably. Give me a listen check. Didn't we pass a fork? Yes, yeah, we, we did. did. <laughs> Mother... Okay, Kia, you're obviously concentrating on blasting this thing with a magic missile. You're distracted. Radovan and Marlo, you can see, you can hear very heavy footprints seeming to be stomping in your direction. Um, by the time you hear it, Kia. Yeah, I rolled yeah. well if I can hear footprints. Oh my <laughs> God. Um, you see it. The biggest one yet. This thing is barely fitting in this car in this chasm. It is much larger than the others. It is its arms are like tree trunks. If there was ever an alpha male, this is an alpha male. Okay. It kind of like looms out, glares at you, lets out a really loud and hideous ah, scream okay. towards you. Um I'm actually uh not gonna hold my action anymore. <laughs> Uh, I am. Uh, well, bear in mind, right now only Kia can see this thing, right? But we oh heard no, it coming, I'm not. I'm yeah, not you can hear it. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, it, it like stops, and then even if you didn't hear it, you literally just hear this. But it is deeper and louder and more guttural, um, echoing all the way down the co corridor behind you. Okay. Alrighty. With my held action, I want to dash up to this thing. Dash up to where? To the one in front of me. Okay. So you're going to use your move to go over there? Okay. And I'm pretty sure just one punch yeah, to it. From, yeah, because you'd have to get around Radovan and run over there. So it would take your move. Let it have it. Uh, uh, what style am I in? Uh, cheese style. Oh, I'm in snake style? Yeah, that's right. Decrease that for a second. No flank. Uh, yep, yeah, no flank. Um, you hit it for thirteen points of damage. Alrighty. Uh, it's still up. But it's it's hurt, uh, and that was you holding your action, right? Yes. Alrighty. Um, so Radovan, you are up. Uh, I would honestly, I mean, hearing the one behind me, I would want to finish this one off immediately. Okay. I didn't know Marlo was going to do that, and I can't see her still, right? So. No. Wait a second. I have a question. If that was uh -huh. me holding my action. The Yeti actually go. The Yeti went first. Um, you were going to hold your action, but then you basically didn't, so it didn't matter. So we're not... Oh, so this is... Okay, Radovan was at the bottom of the round. Uh, Key is at the bottom, but he's behind you, yeah. Full attack. Hey, uh, three that's hits, hey. and that's a 20! Natural 20! Yeah. No, because the Yeti went first. The Yeti went before you. You were holding your action. And then when you actually said, I'm not going to hold my action anymore, that would have actually been your action. So you didn't have to hold it. Oh, okay. So I just lost that one. Okay. Yeah, because you, yeah, you, you didn't attack in that round. That was when they were fighting the little thing. You chose not to attack it. So the round completely went by, and you basically were just like poised, but you didn't actually. You have to. You, if you hold an action, you must use it before the action. The round is over. You can't. Otherwise, you could technically stockpile actions. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't realize that the Yeti's attack was at the top. I yeah, it, it was. I yeah, no, that was that, the bottom that's of why. Okay. No. Um, okay. Making fun of me for burning a little baby. Um, so Red Van, uh, I owe 20. you. I owe you a twenty as well. And so let me give you your natural 20 
because you know they're so rare that you get them so i'm gonna put it on there <laughs> Congrats. Um, this thing is dead right um let's see with that crit yeah it's it's dead um no ifs ands or buts that yeti that's a dead yeti uh kia you you get to act at the end of this round okay i this monstrous thing is forward. thundering out of the dark towards you yeah i'm gonna cast wall of fire and have it's a shame that that 20 doesn't a line count, come up right here to cut try to cut it off and it goes 20 feet high um so it should be like it almost to the ceiling, but I mean, it's not going to be stupid enough to walk through your wall of fire, or yeah. is it? Um, <laughs> no, oh, no, it's, and then it's I'm not. Back the um, up to, like, over hang here. on. <laughs> and let me go ahead and give you a wall of fire. Nice. Um, it deals two d four points to creatures within ten feet. So I guess, um, I guess I do that much. <laughs> Right oh, now. stop. Hold on. Right, okay. Yep, um, so you can do... There's some four damage. Uh, that's actually <laughs> six damage. So... Six points Guys, of it's damage. Huge. Okay. Um, Back up. You hear it like... You hear it like... <laughs> To echoes down the corridor. And. Is the other way now? No, because we're going to end the show right there <laughs> and leave this epic fight for the next episode. So there you go. Hi there, I'm Gorbad. Welcome to the Orc's Nest. I'm the Dungeon Master here on How We Roll, and if you'd like to follow me personally, you can do so on Twitter at Gorbad. Check out thedmblog.com for all things Dungeon Master and Dungeons and Dragons related. And of course you can follow me on twitch.tv slash gorbad. Also guys, don't forget to keep up with all things How We Roll. Follow us on Twitter at How We Roll. Check out the website www.howweroll.com and make sure you follow us on YouTube as well. Cheers guys! Shagget here. On How We Roll I play Radovan Rainier, War Priest of St. Cuthbert who just so happened to author a new academic book that's coming soon. It's titled Libido Rectification for the Required Propagation of Arconis' Depleted Men-at-Arms, or more affectionately titled Mandate Number 2 and You. You can follow me on Twitter at Ineb underscore Convos for upcoming book excerpts, just to get the hype going, you know, push up the sales. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, I'm the Dragon Spooker, and I play Marlo Rayfell, monk and resident badass for How We Roll. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so using at Dragonspooker, or follow my Twitch channel, which I sometimes stream on, twitch.tv slash thedragonspooker. Hi, thanks for watching another episode of How We Roll. I am Jane Ivana, and this is my lovely cat, Norman, who really doesn't want to be here right now. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jane on Twitch with a zero. Shh, don't tell him he doesn't like birds. Um, I stream occasionally on twitch.tv slash Nirvana, so you can find me there. And I guess that's all we got. You got something to say? Nope. Peace, suckers. Bye.